Hey guys, well, we have some energy coming in hot today. Mars, our fire planet, the red planet, ruling anger, aggression, passion, strength, courage, and willpower, is reactivating today the specific degree where our last lunar eclipse and full moon happened in Taurus and Scorpio. This could definitely bring some fiery or explosive events and ongoings today, specifically pertaining to things that may have happened or may have started around November 19th, because that was the day of our full moon lunar eclipse that happened on the axis of Scorpio and Taurus and the degree which is being activated by Mars today, who is also the ruler of Scorpio and was an exact opposition to Uranus for that full moon. So expect the unexpected, possibly, like I said, some heated or explosive events or ongoings today. But we have Jupiter still involved in this as well. And honestly, whatever transpires is truly pushing us for some type of breakthrough and conscious awareness into truth and awakening so that we can be set free from what has been holding us back in the past. Welcome back to my channel, everybody. Today is Thursday, December 9th, 2021. My name is Aubrey and this is your astrological outlook of the day. And before I get into the energetics, just looking at the date of things today and correlating it to the energy and the aspects that we have in effect, this is a very Jupiter, Jupiterian day all the way around any way you slice it, although it is also very um, much a Martian day because we have all of this Mars activation going on. But remember, Mars and Jupiter are still in a square to each other. This square has been exact the past couple of days. Mars did move today, widening the um, square to a one degree or, but it's still very much in effect. And remember, we are in Sagittarius season, which means that Jupiter is the ruler of planets in Sagittarius right now and where the majority of the energy is. So, and we also have the moon coming to conjunct Jupiter today, actually in the early hours that happened. So there's a major emphasis on Jupiter today. And today is Thursday, which is the day of the week that is ruled by Jupiter. And it's also the ninth, which is the number that is ruled by Jupiter. So Thursday, December 9th, very Jupiterian Jupiter day expansion blessings, hope, and optimism trying to cut through or give us like some type of underlying support for the rest of the energy that's going on today, but definitely just a big overblown and expanded energy and then colored very much specifically by Mars. And that's another reason that I'm saying we could have quite an explosive, big energy type of day today obviously also because this lunar eclipse full moon is being activated, at which point Mars had also been in exact opposition to Uranus. So we're in more great awakening energy today, and it just might get a little fiery and contentious out there, but a very Jupiter natured day, aside from all of this other Mars energy that we have going on as well. So let's jump in. Let me give you guys some basic themes that I'm seeing for the energetics today. Then I want to also talk about the Sabian symbols that are active today. They're kind of telling us a little bit of interesting story. And I'm going to do a recap of our full moon in Taurus and Scorpio energetics for that lunar eclipse that we had on November 19th, because again, that is the energy that Mars is activating today. So all of that coming at you in your astrological outlook for today. So first things first, basic themes that I'm looking at today, like I said, it might get a little bit hot out there, still big energy today, but there is an extra emphasis on Mars, like I said, and also I should say, for those of you wondering what I'm always looking at, why I'm not just like always looking specifically into the camera, it is because I every morning do like a little meditation, connect to spirit, connect to God while I'm looking at the astrology and I hand write notes, right? And so I, you know, when I'm in that moment of meditation, a lot of times just like things will come through that I want to write down and make sure that I say because I just know that they are messages that I'm supposed to relay. And sometimes just like when I'm in the moment doing the video, if I don't have these notes, I might forget to say what I was needing to say. So when you see me looking down at my paper or looking off to the side, it's really just because I am referencing 
my notebook and making sure that I am saying what I was guided to say in my morning meditation. Um, and then, you know, like as I'm doing the report, I'm also sort of like tapping in and saying whatever comes to my mind as well. But I just wanted to say, if you were wondering why I'm not always looking straight at the camera, it's because I am referencing my handy dandy notebook and that's what I'm doing right now. So Still big energy today, like I said, but there is an extra emphasis on Mars, of course, because of the reactivation of these eclipse degrees today. Mars is at 28 degrees of Scorpio today, and that was the degree where the full moon, Taurus, and Scorpio and our lunar eclipse occurred. And let's see, things happening like I've already said this, things happened or came up or started happening around that full moon are primed for experience again today. And with Mars still in the square to Jupiter, the moon with Jupiter today, like I said, the moon is also transiting through late Aquarius and will enter early Pisces by about midway through the day today and then continue through the early degrees of Pisces. But we do have the moon conjuncting Jupiter. And this is again, energizing this Mars Jupiter square that we have going on, you know, by the moon, the moon will also square Mars. So again, this could just be bringing more of these overblown explosive feelings, actions, impulses, events taking place. But we have the nodes involved today as well. Like I said, the moon in late Aquarius will conjunct Jupiter and then we'll head into early Pisces. The nodes right now, the north and the south node, karma and destiny, past and future, what we need to release and let go of so that we can move towards something new that is going to help us grow and learn and evolve. Two degrees of Gemini and Sagittarius currently, when the moon comes to two degrees of Pisces, that will be forming an exact square between the nodes. And so whenever the nodes are activated, this is bringing up themes of destiny and karma, very faded energies, occurrences, interactions. And so we have that going on today as well. And remember, eclipses are also very faded events and occurrences. They are specifically involving the nodes. And a lot of times they have to do with us coming to a point in time where we can release something and let go so that we can align with the proper destiny, the proper path forward that we need to move us forward. So we are again today acting activating some very, very faded, destined energy and karmic release. And it's just interesting that we would have the moon squaring the nodes, like speaking to this faded energy today, while Mars is reactivating the degree of the lunar eclipse, which was really talking about faded endings and being able to karmically release what we can no longer, what's no longer benefiting our growth anymore so that we can go on this destined path forward and go through this major internal transformation and learn, expand our perceptions and change our mindset about things so that we can really go through this transformation into the energetic age of Aquarius, which is what everything is pushing for right now. And of course, we have Jupiter in Aquarius emphasizing this as well. So that's basically what I'm looking at in terms of the overall themes that are coming in today. And again, I will recap this full moon eclipse that we had in a little bit. You guys really might want to jump back to that video and rewatch it if you are wondering, you know, more specifically the type of thing that might come back up or the type of energy that we can really expect to be emphasized with a huge red exclamation point today because of Mars reactivating those degrees. But let's talk for a brief minute about the Sabian symbols, the specific degrees where planets are at today and the symbolism these degrees are presenting so that we can have a better idea of the message that the planets are truly sending us today. And the degrees that I'm looking at today are the sun, the earth, Jupiter, Mars, and Mercury. So the Sabian symbols, what they are is a group of energetics that describe each, or a group of symbols, sorry, that describe each and every one of the 360 degrees of the zodiac. Whenever there's a planet at a specific point, making an aspect, discharging a degree, we can look to that specific degree, read the symbol, and it just gives us more information about like really the underlying purpose, the underlying cause, what this specific degree on a frequency basis kind of emanates to what we can potentially expect this activation to give us in terms of this grand unfolding astrological story that is constantly and perpetually carrying us through time and space. So that is really 
what the Sabian symbols are. And now let me jump in and tell you the Sabians of these planets that I referenced and what we have going on today. So it is very like cute and funny and ironic to me, actually, the degree placement of the sun today, 18 degrees of Sagittarius, where the sun is currently. This Sabian symbol is tiny children in sun bonnets. And I just find that to be like really cute because like I've been saying, it might be a hot day. It might get hot out there. There might be some heated things going on. And it's like universe is trying to like galactically protect us in some type of a way by discharging tiny children in sunbonnets. And it's funny also because at this point in time in this shift of the ages, we really are all pretty much like tiny children learning how to navigate this new energetic and vibrational paradigm that we are entering into now and having to learn, you know, the skills that we need in order to navigate this new world, this new territory that we're in. And universe is really referencing that today, calling us tiny children, tiny children in sunbonnets. So there is some type of divine assistance or divine intervention in some type of a way that is trying to protect us and keep us safe from any of that blazing heat that might be going on out there today. This is also telling me, you know, if you're feeling like maybe something about like protecting the head today or wearing a hat today or maybe something about wearing something on your head, some type of head covering for some energetic reason might provide some type of grounding or comfort or protection or relief today as we navigate these very hot, 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 intense energetics because of Mars reactivating this Scorpio full moon lunar eclipse for remember at which point Mars was in the opposition to Uranus. So just found that to be a little bit interesting coming through from the Sabians today. We also have the Earth today at 18 degrees of Gemini. That Sabian symbol is two Chinese men talking Chinese. So honestly, it's like on Earth today, we're kind of like striving for someone that we feel like speaks our language, <laughs> like somebody that we can actually communicate with and have like hope that they understand us and like we don't need to like translate to and you know it might also bring about connections where we are feeling like we resonate very strongly with someone and they like speak our language like I said but it might be something that like other people on the outside just don't necessarily perceive or understand that type of thing so Something like that may be prevalent in terms of our experience on the ground today, sort of seeking out or feeling attracted to or drawn to or coming into contact with somebody who we just feel sort of like innately speaks our language. Now, the degree of Mercury today, 24 degrees of Sagittarius, a bluebird standing at the door of a house. I love this symbolism. I'm referencing Mercury today because we do have the nodes in the north and the south node in effect as a result of the square to the moon and also this eclipse being reactivated and the north node destiny the path forward the collective blueprint and the evolutionary path ahead is in gemini ruled by mercury and i've been keeping a close eye on mercury lately for that reason among other reasons but at with you know mercury a blue bo bluebird standing at the door of the house like we are you know we are singing our truth we are happily like approaching and waiting and feeling a little bit like comfortable and we are just like the, the song in the heart the, the bluebird singing the song of our heart and that might be something you know as we are looking to connect with these people speaking our language today maybe it is based on being able to speak or to sing sort of like the truth in our heart with mercury at this degree also, we have Mars today, 28 degrees of Scorpio. This is where that full moon was. The king of the fairies approaching his domain, the return of the magic, a return of self-empowerment and understanding within us that we really do contain the power and the resources to be the master of our own destinies and to bring the magic back to life in tapping into it ourselves and realizing that it, it's something that we hold within us and it just needs to be reinvigorated and we can really, the path that we're heading on right now really is going to be bringing a whole bunch of magic back to our realm of reality as we realize how powerful the human spirit really truly is in conjunction and co-creation with universe and all of these latent talents and abilities and these universal laws that we have been 
very blind to or that have been hidden from us over the course of the past 2,000 years and the whole age of Pisces. We are coming out of that now. We are heading into the age of Aquarius, self-enlightenment, self-empowerment, self-knowledge, self-mastery, and truly a return of the magic and our ability to use it and to have it be like a supportive faculty of our co-creation with God and universe in this reality going forward in this new Aquarian paradigm. So very powerful degree of that full moon lunar eclipse and also where Mars is today. And last but not least, the last degree that I want to talk about today is the degree where Jupiter is an ancient pottery bowl filled with violets. To me, this is talking about wisdom gained through experience, things from the past that are able to like sustain and be repurposed in such a way that they are still functional going forward or at a more modern point in time. And again, this is sort of like the return of the magic, like ancient truths that have been lost to humanity throughout the course of this past 2000 years, still being available and able to be repurposed and reused for where we're at now. So that's sort of how I'm looking at and interpreting the energetics today of these specific planets that are in effect. Again, of course, we have the North Node still at two degrees of Gemini, Santa Claus furtively filling stockings, hanging by the fireplace. This is really telling us that the path ahead, once we go through these changes, once we weather the storms, once we go through this vibrational shift, it really is leading us to true fulfillment and blessings and gifts in abundance. It's just that the South Node, the ocean is covered with white caps. That's the degree of two Sagittarius where the south node is. And so we have to navigate these choppy waters, these difficult emotions so that we can go through this process of release, break through our mental subconscious programming and shadow side issues, which has also been a major theme this week so that we can truly crack our own programming codes and begin to truly come into this process of self-knowledge, self-mastery, self-empowerment, and true co-creation with God, universe, and the laws of this paradigm and this reality as we go through this vibrational shift into the age of Aquarius. So these are the these are the basic themes today. These are the energetics that are being discharged by the position of the planets. The main, you know, the main news, the main business that we have to look forward to or that we're experiencing today again is really the reactivation of this degree and just because it's mars things that began with that full moon eclipse could definitely be seeing some type of climax or high point energy energy wise right now now let's jump back and talk about the eclipse full moon now i'm changing notebooks because that was in a different notebook Okay, so, and I, I did not write new notes on this. I'm just referencing back my notes from that day because, I mean, it's, of course, the same themes. But I want to sort of, like I said, recap because this is very, very likely to be something that we are experiencing today again because of Mars there and in a big way because of the square to Jupiter and all the Jupiter energy as well. So, on November 19th, when we had that full moon in Taurus and Scorpio at 28 degrees, remember that was the king of the fairy approaching his domain where Mars is today. This day was a very, very powerful energetic day. And that was because not only was it the full moon in Taurus and Scorpio and also a lunar eclipse, which is at, at this point in time in these signs, this lunar eclipse was really about endings of things that had been binding us in a state, keeping us away from the truth of our internal value and the liberty to align with that. And every single planet in the sky was making aspect on that day of that full moon lunar eclipse that we had. And there was just so much energy involved like across the board because every single planet was involved. We had that day, we had Mars in an exact opposition to Uranus. We had Venus in a trine to Uranus and a sextile to Mars. We had Mercury in a trine to Neptune. We had Saturn in a sextile to Chiron. 
and that full moon lunar eclipse itself was in square to Jupiter and in a sextile to Pluto. So it really was like a powerhouse of energy going on that day because there was so much pushing for things to happen so that we could get to a point where we were ready to release and let go of things that had been that we had been bound to that were not in the highest good or the highest alignment for us. This eclipse was all about pushing for freedom, liberation, awakening, truth, rectification, and transformation. And overall, what I wrote at that time, overall, I said the full moon and square to Jupiter in Aquarius was mind-blowing truth that breaks us free from our darkness. And as we know, this whole week leading up to this activation with all of this black moon energy, if you guys have been following my reports this week, getting us to see, recognize our darkness, and then figure out how to actually heal it, clear it, integrate it, and release ourselves from it has been a major, major energetic theme of the activations and our experiences that have been playing out this week with all that black moon energy. And this really did start and was indicated with that full moon. At that point in time, I said there was a spiritual battle and it was playing out on higher levels. Humanity is involved, was involved, and is still today vibrationally in this as we collectively battle our own inner demons through this transit of that eclipse and everything that was associated with it. We are being spiritually and galactically and vibrationally supported. Humanity is breaking free from the grip of lower frequencies and being born again in alignment with God's divine vision of us. The truth is returning along with the magic and the power of the human spirit spirit. We are turning the keys that unlock ancient secrets and we are waking up to a whole new world. I really saw this specific eclipse and full moon as the birth of a new paradigm. Remember, this was happening in Taurus and Scorpio, which is the sign of death and rebirth. And the shift of the ages, of course, you know, that wasn't an easy process. This is not an easy process. It's not quick and it's not painless, but it, the energetics were indicating at that point in time, a total metamorphosis being required but the thing is, you know, we had all of this divine assistance, this divine intervention going on and anger was another theme of that energetic. So with Mars today coming back to that degree, really reactivating all of the energetics that were initially in effect when we had this specific lineup of energy and planets and transits going on. It's like whatever failed to go off or to happen or to change at that point in time, it's like energy over this past few weeks since the 19th has been building. There has been divine intervention. Things have been going on. And now we are reaching a climax point in that energy. And it's just likely to be somewhat explosive, like I said, somewhat heated, somewhat contentious. But I mean, the higher octaves of Mars, this is all about like the divine masculine, the spiritual warrior, um, righteous anger, um, motivation, willpower, strength, endurance, like inspiration, passion. So there's, you know, there's always two ways that this energy can go. And we may see, you know, a lot of destruction with this as things are breaking down. That is another point of this energy to break things down so that they can go through the Phoenix process and be reborn out of the ashes into something even more brilliant and amazing and wonderful. And that really is the collective path that humanity is on right now. So, you know, we are going through this rebirth process. Things do have to break down um, and there may be anger over that breakdown process or there may be anger or eruptions of people really standing in that righteous fury and putting their foot down and standing up for themselves and any type of blowback that may come from that as well. So, you know, there's a lot of ways and a lot of reasons why we might see this more like aggressive, contentious, heated energy playing out today, but it's not all negative. Like we are also at a point in time where the divine masculine is waking up. The spiritual warrior is stepping onto the battlefield. Like we are very, 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 very much in a spiritual battle right now. And, you know, 
that's it's as above so below microcosm macrocosm we are all involved in the spiritual battle in the fight between our lower frequencies and our lower selves and our higher selves and our higher frequencies and you know our conditioning and our programming and our evolutionary path and you know where are our, our the purpose that we actually came here for in being able to reach for that and activate that and shift our frequency and shift our vibration. And, you know, it happens within each of us. And that is how the spiritual battle is won is truly by every single one of us going through this process of facing our darkness, seeing our root issues, slaying our demons, breaking ourselves free from the conditioning and the loops and the patterns and the shackles and in anything that we've been enslaved to from the past as a result of that programming, as a result of those demons, as a result of that conditioning, we are breaking through that right now. And, you know, it might leave somewhat of a little bit of a path of destruction, but that is how this process happens. We all do it individually. We all go, we're all being pushed by universe right now to go through this internal vibrational shift where we conquer our demons, rise into our higher selves and start operating out an out of an octave of true self-knowledge, self-wisdom, self-empowerment, self-mastery, so that we can really truly begin to co-create with universe and tap into the magic, tap into the laws of this reality that have been, you know, hidden from us or we've been unaware of our power to really connect with because we've needed to go through this vibrational shift in order to do that. And there is just this huge component of being able to surrender to God and to really you know, understand that it's the intertwinement of both. It's the human spirit in conjunction with universe and God. It's the co-creation that we are aiming for right now. And we can't get there unless we go through this internal shift and slay those demons. And hence the spiritual war. It's happening on the microcosm level within all of us. It's happening on the macrocosm Uh, on a vibrational and frequency based level, but we really are all the spiritual warrior right now as we go through this process of winning our own internal battle, winning our own internal war, slaying our own demons, standing in our power, conquering our weaknesses and our darkness and shifting vibrationally. And one by one by one, as this process is completed, the, the light will continue to overtake the darkness until we have arrived on the other side and we are in truly the Aquarian frequencies and vibrations and doing the co-creation with God and universe things and no longer allowing these lower octaves, lower energies, conditioning, toxic addictions to whatever to be, you know, controlling us or subliminally or subconsciously controlling us without our awareness in any type of a way. So very actually, very, very beautiful step in the progress and the progression. Very powerful, very important. And, you know, it's just Mars is the planet of the battlefield. Mars does rule war. That's why I'm wearing camo today, actually, as sort of an ode to Mars, just trying to get on his good side a a little bit. Um, You know, you can do that too if you want to, but that is sort of with my wardrobe theme today. I just had Mars on my mind. But yeah, we're fighting a battle internally. We're fighting battles externally as a result of the battles we're fighting internally because as within, so without. And as we are victorious over our own energy and our own issues, we will simultaneously be victorious over the battles and the conflicts that we are fighting in our external world. And through that process, the spiritual war will be won and the light will be victorious because that is how it is written in the cosmic blueprint as at this point in time as we transition into the age of Aquarius and really begin to come out of the darkness and back into the light. So that is what I have to say for my astrology for the energetic reports today. Um, Let me jump into the tarot cards really quickly. Got an interesting tarot message this morning. I'm shuffling the cards, uh, you know, asking God, what message would you like me to give the collective today? What would, where are we at? You know, what's going on? And I have to say, it wasn't the most positive and uplifting message today, but it's what I got. So I still got to read it. And even though, you know, it's not on face value, like it's just kind of telling where we're at right now. So when uh, when the cards came out, the first card that came out was the Eight of Swords in reverse. And this is actually good. 
I don't like to see this like this because this is really what we're breaking free from right now. This is being controlled by that subconscious programming, those shadow side issues, those mind controls, uh, thoughts, toxic thoughts, keeping us bound in a state where we can't maneuver our own reality through our own self mastery. And then the car, but, but it came out in reverse. So this actually means to me that we really are collectively breaking the mental chains that have kept us enslaved to these past paradigm conditioning, viewpoints, perceptions, all of that. So this actually is a good thing, but the card that came out next was the star in reverse. So this to me is saying, you know, really like even though we are going through this process right now of breaking the chains on our mind, and that is really like it's kind of amazing to me that this card came out first because that is really what we have been doing with the black moon energetics this week and the Eris point activations and the Mars Jupiter square, like really breaking free from the mind constraints constraints that keep us trapped is a big theme right now. But we may be feeling a little bit lacking inspiration, lacking hope, feeling like like lacking guidance and just feeling like a little like disillusioned or depressed at the moment. And then on the back of the deck we had the six of wands in reverse. And this, when the six of wands is upright, this is a card about victory. But when the six of wands is reversed, this is a card about failure. So collectively, honestly, even though we are going through this process right now of breaking out of these mental prisons that have been keeping us stuck, we may collectively, honestly, be feeling a little depressed, lacking hope, lacking inspiration lacking like the ability to see what is coming next and we may be feeling like we've lost at something or we are not being successful at something in dealing with that but interesting when i looked under the six of wands on the back of the deck just to see what was there there's actually a progression of cards that seems to be continuing on the story so i wanted to say those as well and right underneath the six of wands talking about feeling like a failure at this point in time and you know not having inspiration or hope possibly right underneath that was the strength card upright so and then right behind that was the six of swords and then right behind that was the empress you guys so even though this may be how we're feeling right now hopeless and like we've lost or failed at something as a result of having to go through this process and cut ourselves loose if we can have the strength to keep going and to move away from these things it really is trying to bring us back into the truth of the authentic love, value, abundance, creation, and fertility that we hold inside of us to be able to create with that and experience that fulfillment and abundance internally and have it reflected back to us externally. So even though, you know, we have that all that going on today and we might be feeling a little depressed, we still have hope. We just need to have the strength to keep moving forward and understand that fulfillment, blessings, fertility, creativity are coming to us. Now, I am gonna, I only have a couple seconds. Let's see if I can, things are not as they seem is our synchronicity card for the day. Um, this is just a message from God that needs to, that can help us as we maneuver these energetics right now. And he shall separate them from one another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Matthew 25, 32. You must know the difference between the false and the true. Remove the false and negative thoughts from your mind. Come to a definite decision in your mind that God within you is all powerful and all wise and nothing can oppose God. Remove the fear, the false thoughts. They are not real. No God is opening doors.